always joke and say, as much as I love to go to some places, which I do, I love, I love them to beat. They could not have raised me. It requires a kind of grace and anointing to raise me. And that's the same for everybody. So, no matter how much or how my pastor puts it or don't put it, it is my responsibility with the Holy Ghost to get the best out of it. I remember in 2008, or thereabout, I gave a testimony in Fountain. And, um, can I get a handkerchief for something? And then a, a pastor called me back and said, he declared something over my life. He didn't know me. He probably has never seen me. And every time I tell the stories, I'm like, I can't remember. I said, no, what? It's, not your, it's me that collect the word. And the things he said over me till dates, I still produce. Don't get familiar. In the sense that, someone said the joke of a prophet is even, is even prophetic. It's like a joke, but... And it doesn't have to be someone with title. Even your friend can say, ah, do you know that? The Lord God, like, what Toby did today? I received it in my spirit. And I'll show you in a bit, one of the greatest hallmark of this church is honor. Not selective honor. We're not interested in just honoring the pastors. Neither are we interested in disrespecting or not honoring the pastors. Because there's also the place of, oh, we are all together, we're all together. Yes, we're all together, but there's a reason the Lord has kept certain people as shepherds. But we must honor everybody because if the Lord, I remember when I go to Bethel and a small child walks up to you. I'm like, hello, how are you? Eight, six. Do you mind I pray with you? I have a word of the Lord for you. And the child begins to prophesy. Eight, six, seven. If you're from a culture where you don't honor people, you will disregard that. And you don't know that the destiny or the life God want to give to you, you just walk past it. So know your place. Know where the Lord has called you. Serve there. Ask the Lord for grace. A lot of things I do today and the grace people ask me, how do I do? Like my husband was saying, share with me um, a while ago and he said to me, me see, the reason why some of us can sit is because you are about, you, we can, I can trust that you have seen things. And I didn't develop it overnight from the place of service. I tell people when you serve in church, you are building such a robust CV. You have done event planning, you have done protocol, you have done driver, you have done cooking, you have done things. You have, it's a life skill. As a trainer, there's something we call portable skills. Employers nowadays are not just employing people that have specialized skills. They want portable skills. Portable skills are skills that regardless of the industry you go to, they are relevant. One of them is people management. The greatest place where you exercise people management is in church. It's in church. You work with people you like. You work with people you are praying to God to like you. You submit to people. You, you do all those kind of things. And the Lord will deal with your heart till you come to the place. The church is the place where we step on ourselves without even, like, knowing or knowing, no matter how much we love ourselves, we are working in harmony. Your leg can mismatch. But, like, my marriage, like our marriage, the bedrock, and we share with our leaders, and let it be the hallmark of this church, we will never deliberately hurt you. Know it in your heart and know peace. So that if an issue come up, you can have a conversation with somebody and you can resolve it. Talking about the issue, not attacking the person, is very critical. So no matter how great the issue is in our marriage, the moment is like diffuser. The moment is like, you know, you say, I will never deliberately hurt you. It's gone. Like, I lose every right to be angry. Why? It is a truth that I know and the foundation of our marriage. And let it be the truth we know as a church. The greatest thing you can do for God is to serve God. Not serve man, but serve God. But because we use vessels... God might assign you to certain people to serve the vision. I tell people, you love a leader, look for their work and serve. Not by a face. I'll take that again. You love a leader, you say, I love my leader. I love my boss at work. That company, you love them. Leave the face of your boss. Except you're looking to see if they're pleased. In sense of, you're looking to see if there's something else you can do. Not necessarily for approval. Because if you really do their work, you have touched their heart. You can't mess up the work of a leader and say you love the leader. And there are different types of services. We have eye service, lip service, mouth, no service, and heart service. The one the Lord requires of us is the heart service. It's such a necessity to share this again with us. We're in a day and age that the church we see today 
The access we have was the labor of setting fathers. And it's easy to come to church now and we don't want to be stressed. I get it. Let me tell you this. Sunday is not your rest day. Sunday is a service day unto God. Where you have worked for Monday and then that Sunday, like Pastor told you, say, God can understand that you're tired. It shows the regard you gave, you placed on God. Do we get tired? Absolutely. You work with pastors that they are working. The traffic that, is, that you're going to experience on Todd Mayland, P.O. is going to experience it tomorrow morning. I was looking at them wondering, why did you take leave? Well, you say, Missy, I have caught leave. I can't just be leaving anyhow. So like, I'm Aka prayed, he will pray to God for strength. Talking about distance, where the Lord placed you in a place, there are people that go all the way. My late dad will wake up 4 a.m. to get to Otter. That was the most, one of the most active I've ever seen for me, Solo, all the way to Canaan land because that was where he saw it in the dream. Go! He didn't know who he was. And he woke up and, and found out that the person he saw was David Oedipo. So when the Lord plays you, nothing else becomes an excuse. You know, there's things that our parents did that was, ah, they're honest to and now I'm seeing. And you wonder why they have certain results. Some people have built certain depth with God. Amen. Go to my next slide. I want to show you the people called Oh, What's that story? Next. Sorry. Kapsan, I didn't bring our... <laughs> Wait, does the Church of the Fountain of Life Church? Next. Just, not next, be pressing it. Yes. <laughs> we started the 13th of January, 2019. We commenced with afternoon meetings, started with our friends. We moved to morning service, March 2nd. Found the pastors are uh, Pastor Lumide and Mr. Lua Wolabi. A brief background. My husband has always been a fountain that he can remember. I don't think you were born there. But were you born there? No. You came like five or something? Seven. Yeah. It's OGs. Like, they've been a fountain. Late Pastor Bimbo Dukoya, my mother-in-law, used to be friends in UI. So apparently she's been on fire and then one day she just saw, ah, being scunny, and that's how they went. So she's always been like that. And after a while, serving in church, we moved to different levels in service in church. And eventually, they took people from evangelism and asked them to start to serve in the teens' children's church. And my guy was wondering, like, what? But as, as we are, he gave himself to it. I believe that was God's preparatory ground for this because they literally had to built from scratch. He became the pastor. He became the MC because he can sing. He became the choir. He became do, 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 do. And when they made him pastor, the children started crying. They wanted to even revolt. They were going to take it out to pastor. You can't take Uncle Lumide away from us. He did this without instruments for a long time. How many years did you do that? I think about two, three years. Or there about. He did it for a long time. Now, let me explain what it means. When it comes to church, when we're saying, hallelujah, for the love of the Spirit, is not there. He's with children. So whatever he needs to feed on, he will go back during the week to feed on. I had to do that for about three years. There's somebody that was leading in, a, you know, so we're talking about seasons of life. There's always been a career person, a salesperson, I know. Then for me, on the other hand, I was fully serving, um, I did, um, Different things. I was a campus pastor of Fountain of Life Church in Unilag. We did different things. Doing ministry now, I think 17 years. So at the time, pastor called us. Again, talk by was in a meeting we were in. October, table talk with Timisi, 2018. And the Holy Ghost did his thing. It was supposed to be a conversation, but the whole place. And this guy was gone for God knows how many hours or how many minutes. And he said so many things. And I'm like, what is this guy talking about? The one that my eyes said, lie, lie. He said, I see a church, January, a church is starting. Hello, how? October. Which church? How? And we told him that, no, 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 no. Well, December, Pastor Tyro called us. November, to be precise, that the Lord is laying on his heart again to start branches. We've had branches before. He said it to the people. The Lord is asking him to start branches and... He wants us amongst other people to go. I was trying to say, sir, like, how do we want to? Like, mm. We said, we're going to pray about it. It's like, I believe in you. If you know, Pastor Tyro, you can do it. The Holy Ghost is going to help you. 
He said, we are coming, sir. First, after we realized, we had to cut up. Hello, sir. You see, that thing you said, actually, it's not, it's not wrong. And I sent you a video. I wish I put it on. I sent a video when he came to NIM, NIMR. And we prayed about it. And did we hear a voice, my children, my children, go? Not necessarily. The question was, why not? Why? The Lord God, we're not looking for it. The second thing was, this is the person the Lord has planted over us. And I've trusted over time, there is no manipulation. Because if you are two pastors, that's what at that point you're not doing. It's not going to force you. Right? But he was a big person. He called again. We went to see him. I said, sir, you know that? I said, I know. You are like very evangelistic. I pastoral. I said, yes. I said, pa, we're always, by this time, when first man was, you know, we're going to nations. I said, sir, we're always traveling. That 2019 was even the worst. Like, I was literally living in the air. I said, sir, how will we do church? Hey, pastor, Amy of hell. I know what my eyes have seen with, at that time, God knows how many years of doing ministry. But guess what? This is one of the most noble things we have done. If I didn't do this, I will not qualify for the next phase. The Lord, I needed it. We thought we were doing something for God, but God was doing something for us. Because now I have opportunity to speak about certain things that before I had knowledge, but this is experiential. So when I come and speak in certain places with certain fathers about para ministry and church, I can speak. Why? I'm able to move. So when I asked, I said, Dad, he said, I know. Listen to this. He said, if I thought you were a problem, I would never have come to you. I said, what do you mean? He said, I see how you and Olumide were serving. I saw how you supported what Pastor Nomti was doing. That's why the fact that you had a ministry, you never divided the church with your ministry. You come in and act like there's nothing. I see these things. I'm wondering, he said, where do you see from? Olumide, I saw it's the children's church. If I thought you would be, I said, sir, did you say when friends pray? I bless it. Go ahead. Do everything. I trust you. Go. So we are running with the vision of someone and we are so conscious of it not to pollute it. That's why you rarely see us announce all the other things we are doing from this stage deliberately. Not because he even told me that he said, no problem. I said, sir, I don't need. Let's, so that, let's the church be churchy. Of course, from time to time when I'm speaking, it comes out in reference, but never. And that's how we started. And when we're going to start, of course, some people just, we move. We were about 10 in the first meeting. Look at us today. And for one year, we were in that place where there was no keyboard, there was no drum, there was nothing. And to be honest, I'm like, what kind of things? Because everybody, there was, there was, nobody put the pressure on us, to be honest. And God bless Pastor Tayo. He's not one of those people, this is the timeline. You must provide this. He said, when we come, and say, hallelujah, you were saying, glory to God. Keep doing it. That's how fountain started. We started in a small place. You know, you just watch what God will do. Go, I believe in you. I say, Baba. And Pio said to me, he said, I'm not under pressure to do anything. And the Lord said, if you cannot post bar picture, you are not permitted to post stadium picture. So with our bar at the back, some days the rain will enter. It was just, it was a lot of things. We had to be joyful. Now, we had the resources for instruments. We had everything we needed. But God did not make room for it yet. Why? Just shortly after that, COVID happened, P.O. And when a lot of people were staggering to say how to come, we know this is our way. We have been clapping since. So now is not the time. And when COVID, P.O. is singing, we are, well, so then we moved to my office. Our kinds of people will come there. It was one of the most beautiful experiences we had. Because the testimony of my life and my husband is to the glory of God. God is always there. And the presence is always present. Because it's about him, not about us. Next slide. Who are we? We are anchored in the word. This was done way before this. The word is our template. Next. There's nothing else. Our love language. Can we say it together? Can we say it together? This is what we believe. We want to serve in a way that no one will be left behind. In the church, as we raise you as well, in your own place, you go with the consciousness. In my business, no one will be left behind. In my ministry, no one will be left behind. In my family, no one will be left behind. Let's go. Our core scripture, is Proverbs 27, 23. Be diligent to know the state of your flock and look well to your ends. Know your sheep by name. 
carefully attend to their fields. Don't take them for granted. Possess- possessions don't last. You know that. The next course scripture, Hebrews 12, 15. Exercise foresight and be on the watch to look after one another. This was before Apostle Femi's message. To see that no one falls back. Does this ring a bell? From and falls to secure God's grace. His unmerited favor and spiritual blessing. In order that no, that no root of resentment, rancor, bitterness or hatred shoots forth and causes trouble and bitter torment and that many become contaminated and devoured by it. The next scripture, Luke 15, 4 to 5. There was once a shepherd with 100 lambs. But one of his lambs wandered away and was lost. So the shepherd left the 99 lambs out in the open field and searched in the wilderness for that one lost field, one lamb. He didn't stop. Somebody say he didn't stop. Until he finally found it. With exuberant joy, he raised it up, placed it on his shoulders, and carried it back with cheerful. The next one, John 13, 38. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you love one another, if you keep on showing the love amongst you. These are our core scriptures. We're particular about love. It's not just something like Apostle Femi said, he's been with us, he knows us for a long time. This is, if you even come to us, this is our heart. And it's not far fetched from the heart of our Pastor Tyro. He's one of the most honorable men I've met in my life. You are speaking with Pastor, Pastor is having a conversation. And maybe saying something, he's trying not to, he maybe say something like, oh, 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 God forgive me, no, Lord, no, Jesus. He quickly puts in grace. He's quick to want to, no, 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 ah, well, everybody's doing great though. Everybody's doing this thing. At the same time, he's very diligent with work. So we thank God for that. So to be part of this family is to make a conscious effort to love regardless. Love regardless. Love regardless. Address issues, not attack people. Love regardless. If you have situations, come to the leaders. It's so amazing how certain things, you know, I've been thinking about it, thinking about it, and Pastor told you to mention some of those things as well. Next, who are we? We are hope givers. We give hope. It's the better, it's funny. Someone said, I hope we'll not name your child hope because everything I do, all we do is hope. Hope this is five. Hope nation. Hope this one. Hope everywhere. <laughs> Maybe you want to consider it as English name. Next slide, please. We have certain things from the church's website and we had to, you know, building father into that. Can we read the vision together? That's from the Bremen Church. The Fountain of Life Church. Oh, sorry. It's very small. Okay, let's go to the next one. Vision and mission. This might help a lot of people. A lot of people wonder, what's vision? Where are you going? Mission, how you intend to get there? Let's go. Next slide. Focus, um, your vision statement focuses on tomorrow while your mission statement focuses on today. So what is our vision? This I want everybody to know. Translating the gospel of Christ in powerful ways such that no one is left behind. When we say translating, we're still at so The language might change a bit. So it's preaching and translating the gospel of Christ in powerful ways so that no one is left behind. How many of you have heard the message translation? Go back to our YouTube and look for it. We believe strongly that if you engage the word, it should change your life. How do you translate? Holy Ghost came. I felt I got up. The Lord said, go. How do you translate it to your daily life? That is our vision. And why do we translate so that no one is left behind? Praise God. Can we read it together? I want to go. I say it like you believe this. That is our vision as a church. If it the gospel of Christ, to meet the souls, the lost one, to provide for the needy, to bless life, whatever it is, the gospel of Jesus, that Christ died, he came, and how that translates into different things, that is what we want to do. Not just anyhow, in powerful ways, so that no one is left behind. What is the rationale? Go, go on. Translating encounters, this is the core part of what we believe and preach. Every message and communication is layered with, so how does this translate to changing your life and that of others? Sorry, there's a mistake. These are major parts of the testimonies in the church. The gospel of Christ, we are not translating our ideas, but the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our message in words and deed is what? The next one. Powerful ways. We're not going to be timid about this or make noise. 
Power is a channel through which we do everything. Somebody say dunamis. This is the working of the Holy Ghost. We're not going to do this timidly. We're not going to go on the streets and try to preach the gospel. I see you're sick and afraid to pray for you. We're not going to see the need of our neighbor or our, or our environment. and not know how to trust God for resources for this. Somebody say amen. amen. Next slide. No one will be left behind. This is us positioning ourselves as an apostolic church. Conscious of our sending and reconciliation mandate. What does that mean? In this church, we believe that we are a sent church. So remember, Aka's message is a build up, you know, um, to so many things we've done. There's this time I did a sent series, supernaturally empowered to nurture transformation. We believe that when you, every message you hear in this church, should empower you go into the marketplace or wherever God has called you to be, to be an ambassador. We are a sending church. We're not a, we don't me measure our impact by our sitting capacity. We measure our impact by our sending capacity. Somebody say amen. amen. How, many of our, how many of our church members are doing great in their business, in their family, in their homes, in their whatever it is. So whatever you hear are more important about how does this translate. So they know when you come to me, you give this like, that's okay, so how does this translate? Somebody say amen. amen. Our mission. Quickly, let's go. No, no, hold on. This doesn't mean everyone becomes a member of a church. But we are adopting the principle of the ripple effect like Christ. That impacting one of few can impact the world. We're not trying to make everybody a member of Hope Nation. This might not sit well for everybody. There are some other people that are other great Bible-believing church that some God might send people to. It's foolishness to think that we are the ones that have the message. We are not. We are just part of the big plan of God and it's a privilege to do our part. So we believe that everyone we come in contact with might not be a member of this church. But you are going to be equipped and it's a ripple, someone say ripple effect. So the, the effect, the open nation touch is the ripple effect. Meaning everything we do must have the capacity to multiply and touch something else. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Are you with me? All right, next. I'm going to do the mission and I'll stop there. We'll continue some other time because, no, no, I'll go to the strategic analysis. All right, let's do this quickly. Now, our mission, seven as an apostle. Can we read it together? I want to go. That is our mission. Apostolic means of getting no one being left behind is to disciple, is to equip people and send them into various spheres of influence. Praise God. Hallelujah. I've explained a bit about it. So we're looking at apostolic church rationale, meaning every church should be an apostolic church where we send people out. Next slide. Discipleship. Can we read discipleship? Let's go. One to go. No, next slide. Let's read it. One to go. We are big on discipleship, which is to teach, to learn, to unlearn, and do life together. So it's not, we're not in a hurry. We all will get it. Someone say amen. amen. Next slide. Sphere of influence simply means there's a place for you. Praise God. Now, can you go all the way to strategy? Let me just run through the department and people will come up. Amen. We'll pray and then we'll move on. Praise God. Our strategy. Can you go to? Praise God. Next slide, please. Now, what is the strategic strategy analysis? We have different departments doing different things. One, we have events. This includes our services, Sunday and feed. This is one of our core platforms for teaching, community and family through the Sunday service and our feed. Ministries, they are like syndicates expression that cater to interest-based issues or development, e.g. singles, married couple, fellowship, men and women, campus. This can be a, a way to reach a specific group beyond our local assembly. It is a way to, of preferring solutions to common issues beyond our church. For instance, when we did the prayer banquet, what was that? That was a ministry. We did a prayer banquet. It was open. Different people joined, but they're not a member of our church. 
So our event is a way of impacting, using our own gift to touch the body of Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. So you can, you're looking at some of the department we're talking about. Next slide, outreach. This could be through our evangelism, clothes drive, medical drive, CSR, or campus event and integration. This is bringing hope to our community, either to bring them in through evangelism and follow up of the souls to be planted or to bless them. So we can either be evangelism to bring them in or just to bless them and give back to the society. It's our way of being relevant and shining the light in our community, starting from our Jerusalem. And where is our Jerusalem? I can't hear you. Where is our Jerusalem? Yeah. Next is media. Can we go? Creating top-notch content to drive our vision. Maximizing the online space, products, social media, and AI and technology. To ensure that no one is left behind, the media, space, and technology will be a vehicle to spread the message of hope and transformation to the world. Discipling sent ones across the globe through our content. We're going back to recording some teachings and things like that. Next, music and art, stewarding our core in the music and arts ministry through our songs, play. How many of you know the, the song the church sang? Can you remember? Can you just sing one line? Let's go. Wow. I... Come on. All right. Thank you. A lot of you have not streamed it yet. We have more people outside that stream it. If we don't celebrate our own, what will happen? It was written by a Siri. Can we celebrate him? How many of you enjoyed the play last year that the choir did? Mary. And we shot it and we produced. This year, some people are pushing that we should do a production somewhere in theater and stuff. So, hey, let's see how it goes. So, music and art is the way we are trying to create a, we're a creative church. How many of you agree? We like, we left on me, we'll be shooting movies and stuff every minute. The next is Enrich. Ensuring we have a solid cell unit, effective department and training for all workers, members and visitors, which will help to achieve our CET framework. The framework we use as a church is called CET. The Lord gives it to us, it means constant. Let's go. It means what? Expand and translate. Praise God. You get to know more about that. Next slide. Um, okay, that's the Enrich. Enrich is long. Then we have Hope Fund. Go to Hope Fund. Love is doing is a doing word. This is where we raise funds to be a blessing. Certain people have had surgeries in church. We supported them with, especially members. The way Hope Fund happens is we want to bless everybody. We're interested in blessing the world, but we start with people within. We start with our workers. And that is why it's important that you're part of a workforce. Amen. So do you have a bit of understanding of who Hope Nation is now? Are you sure you have a bit of understanding? So what is our vision again? Praise God. So let's add the other part. All right? Preaching and translating. Amen? Let's go. Preaching and translating the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what is our love language? So the next time you see someone and you, you, you understand the impact of smiling to them. Because no one will be left behind. They may not be your friend, but you can greet them. Nobody should come to church and feel unseen. The people to see everybody is not just the pastors. It's everyone. So like I said, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a lot of teaching. It's going to take, we're shaping the culture. We have many, I didn't even go into our core values today. I've told you one of it. But we believe by the grace of God that in the next season of our lives, we're going to see God do mighty things. Let us rise and pray together for a moment. Can we celebrate Jesus? Amen. Are you proud to be part of this house? Can you celebrate Jesus? Come on. Can you find somebody that you don't know? Yeah, well, you guys don't know. More you can hold him. You don't really know him. What I mean don't know that? You guys don't really talk like that. You know, you don't really know him like that. Choir. No one will be left behind. No, no, no one will be left behind. I said they should find people they don't know. Pio. Oh, 
Okay. Are we together? So begin to tell them you will not be left behind. Bless that person. You will not be left behind. God loves you. God bless you. Now you begin to pray for them. Use your words and pray for them. Use your word and bless them. Let them know that together by the grace of God, we will do mighty things. Together by the grace of God, we will change lives. Together by the grace of God, tell them the works of their hands is blessed. Tell them they will grow from strength to strength. Tell them they will not be tired. Tell them they will not be weary. Come on, bless them. Bless them. Tell them thank you for what you bring on the table. Thank you for being a blessing in your own world. Thank you for being a blessing in your family. Thank you for being a blessing. Come on, celebrate them. Pray for them. Bless them. Bless them. Bless the work of their lives. Pray that whatever they are struggling with ceases today. Bless them. That is well with their spirit, their soul and their bodies. Bless them. They are going out is blessed. They are coming in is blessed. This new season of recalibrate. The Lord is recalibrating everything that concerns them. Bless them that they are returning this week with testimony. Bless them that the devil will not steal from them. Bless them. That everything they've received this week or they will receive is permanently good. In the name of Jesus. Bless them. Bless them. Bless their lives. Bless them. Say a word of blessing over them. Now begin to say that God is proud of you. God loves you. You are strengthened. Begin to affirm them. Tell them they are blessed. Tell them they are blessed. They are blessed. In Jesus name we pray. Somebody shout glory.